Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Mr. Glenn Prickett, Chief Internal Affairs Officer of the Nature Conservancy, His Excellency Tillman Thomas, Prime Minister of Grenada, Her Excellency Julia Gillard, Prime Minister of Australia, His Excellency Baldwin Spencer, Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, His Excellency Danny Ford, Vice President of CISELS, Chairman Yuhei Sasakawa of the Nippon Foundation, my good friend, former President Ramosorot of Timor Leste. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. It is a pleasure for me to co-host this important event with Prime Minister Tillman Thomas of Grenada. I am also pleased to warmly welcome the esteemed leaders and everyone to this gathering. And I thank you for responding positively to our invitation to join us this morning. The green economy and the blue economy have been gaining ground in recent years. They are not contradictory, they are complementary. Blue economy is an integral part of the green economy, which is our common objectives. They are very much part of our sustainable future. As the world's largest archipelago with over 17,000 islands, Indonesia has always been a maritime nation. For us, the sea is a bridge that serves to cement our sense of national unity, a strategic space for our national security, and a critical source of livelihood for millions of our citizens. The blue economy, therefore, is an enormous importance to Indonesia. And we are concerned to see what is happening with our seas, our natural ecosystems, and regenerating biocapacity are being severely degraded. Global warming, climate change, and sea level rise present us with a clear danger. For decades, we have been giving much attention to land-based solutions to climate change. However, we have yet to fully explore the potential of oceans and coastal areas in addressing the impact of climate change. We also have yet to maximize the environmental services and economic value that the oceans can provide to the world. Increasingly, studies show that oceans and coastal areas can contribute toward mitigating global warming. The ocean absorbs over 80% of excess heat and if supported with the right technologies, they can be a source of alternative energy. The ocean, which covers 72% of the planet's surface, also generates half of the oxygen that we breathe. Indeed, the economic potentials of the ocean are enormous. In our drive to benefit from our oceans, we need not to repeat our mistake in utilizing our land. We need to reflect on what humanity has done to our land environment. In the past, our civilization has overexploited our natural resources, which contributed to deforestation, pollution, and land degradation. Surely, we cannot repeat the same mistake to our ocean and coastal areas. We should manage our ocean sustainably. And I wish to invite you to ponder on the concepts of blue economy. This concept, which often refers to as a green economy in a blue world, covers the protections of the marine environment. It also covers the sustainable management of marine resources, especially fisheries. For me, blue economy is our next frontier. Indonesia is ready to advance it. 
in view of our geographic circumstances. Indonesia is an archipelagic country with the second longest coastline in the world after Canada. The sustainability of our marine resources will ensure more reliable sources of food and income for the million living along our coastlines. It will also provide sustenance and welfare for millions more within the country, the regions, and globally. The Indonesian marine sector is an important contributor to our food security. The sector supports the livelihood of people and spurs economic growth. Thus, the concepts of blue economy is relevant as part of our development strategy. Indonesia wishes to achieve sustainable growth with equity, while at the same time assuring environmental safeguards in marine and fisheries sector. The importance of the ocean beach development strategy is pertinent, especially that the population of our planet will reach 9 billion by 2045. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, this population will require an increase of food production by 70%. Thus, we will see a worldwide increase in the demand for food, energy, water, shelter, and other natural resources. We will also see many countries compete globally to fulfill their growing demand for those resources. Together, we need to ensure that our marine resources are sustainable. And for the sake of food security, we need to ensure the health of our seas. Therefore, we need to prevent overfishing, build more resilient coastal communities, and provide more incentive for sustainable fisheries. We must keep the optimal balance of development between the economic, social, and environmental aspects of our oceans. Human activity poses a significant stress to the marine ecosystem. Therefore, do we need to urgently invest in people and technology. This is to ensure the availability of science and technology to best manage our natural resources, and equally important, the best practices in managing the ocean resources. In view of the strategic importance of our ocean, in 2007, I initiated the formation of the Coral Triangle Initiative. I am glad this initiative received wide support from regional countries sharing the coral reefs. Indonesia, along with leaders of Malaysia, the Philippines, Timor-Leste, Papua New Guinea, and the Solomon Island, launched the Coral Triangle Initiative for Coral Reefs, Fisheries, and Food Security. This cooperation is economically viable. Some estimates that the coral reefs alone contribute 375 billion US dollars to global economy every year. We committed to work together to sustain our marine and coastal resources and address important issues of food security, climate change, and marine biodiversity. Since then, our multilateral partnership has grown. On Indonesia's part, I have announced a national marine conservation target of 20 million hectares by 2020. And at a summit in 2009, I and other Coral Triangle leaders agreed to a 10-year CTI Regional Plan of Action. This plan of action focuses on achieving five goals. First, strengthening the management of seascapes. Second, promoting an ecosystem approach to fisheries management. Third, establishing and improving effective management of marine protected areas. Fourth, improving coastal community resilience to climate change and natural disaster. And fifth, protecting threatened species. Indonesia has committed to work with the other coral triangle countries to ensure that we meet our plan of action. We also must collaborate to achieve progress in integrated planning for our reefs, sustainable fisheries, and food security. 
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the crisis of planet Earth is real. It is our responsibility to prevent the growing ecological footprint deficit and foster its surplus. Only through this, we can achieve a sustainable life. In all this, political will was crucial and remain crucial. Why? Because in most cases, the solutions are actually simple, but they are hard to achieve. We have known all the prescriptions. They are part of the global conscience. They are supported by public opinion. But oftentimes, the solution becomes stuck in narrow self-interest, short-sighted politics, and rigid diplomacy, or a, combina a combination of them. Thus, I urge all of us to break from this trap. As a final note, I look forward to working with you to put the concepts of blue economy into practical cooperation. It is only together we can achieve sustainable growth with equity in our ocean and coastal areas. I thank you.